Well, well, well. Welcome, and it's uh, something in the neighborhood of six minutes after the hour of four o'clock, or make that three o'clock, on the 26th day in the month of April, 1989. A uh, very, very special day for uh, <clears throat> for for someone. Uh, I'm sitting in his living room, uh, the magnificent Lasseter, actually right here in his living room, as we promised several weeks ago when we asked those of you who wanted the distinct pleasure, the very distinct pleasure of having me in your living room. Well, this is one of the people, and it's uh, good old Frank Mar. Keys and E. Okay. Close enough? Uh, I, I know Frank. I'm just absolutely terrible with these things. But nonetheless, it's such a big day in Frank's life. I'm sure he won't mind my mispronouncing his name for at least the first hour of the show until we get it correct, which we will eventually do before we leave here. We will not leave until we do have it correct. But uh, this is just, you know, just another day in, in the life uh, for most of you, and so therefore it's just another show in the life for most of you. And a, a couple of things that I wanted to get down to business with immediately. Uh, I had promised to do our, our quarter annual show our tribute to Shorty Obarski this afternoon. That has been put off until tomorrow afternoon when we will, of course, once again document his incredible success that he has had with his radio station over there on the other side of the bay. Not the one at the end of the road, the one on the other side of the bay. There is something, though, that I did want to, to, to address today. I received a letter as I was, came in the, in the late mail. I was, literally, as I was walking out of the station yesterday, and I didn't get around to reading it until this morning, and it is, it's just a great, great, great letter. I would, uh, I'd like to share it with you. It starts out, Mr. Lassiter, not dear Mr. Lassiter, but just Mr. Lassiter, which is better than the letters that start out Lassiter. But nonetheless, it goes on, last Saturday, I was shopping at Tyrone Mall. I assume she means Tyrone Square Mall, St. Petersburg. I had finished shopping, probably sh shop listing, and had come out of the store to sit on a bench where I waited for my friends. A stranger sat beside me, Suddenly, she was talking about WFLA and you. Have you ever noticed how, you know, when people start talking to you about talk radio or about radio in general, they never mention, you know, like Jay Marvin or anybody like It's always me. I wonder why that is. Anyway, the letter writer goes on. She was very, very annoyed about your continuous criticism of our elderly population. Come now, madam. I frequently pick on the Bible and, you know, several other things. It's not just the elderly people. Uh, let's see where she goes on, uh, elderly population. She named her gripe, number one, blue-haired women. Get up to date. Bluing went out many, many years ago. I appreciate that letter writer. That's why I frequently joke about it, because it is not out of date in St. Petersburg. Two, elderly drivers. Their records are much better than the drugged and drunken younger drivers. Again, get up to date. Sorry there, uh, letter writer, but miles for driven the elderly are just a disaster. Three, brain-damaged winter visitors. No, madam, that's brain-damaged snowbirds. Uh, that remark outraged her the most. Do you believe for one moment that any senior citizen wants to appear brain-damaged? Well, I would hope not. Uh, my God, man, where are your brains? It is not at all impossible for younger folks to become brain damaged. I appreciate that letter, writer. As a matter of fact, I rarely mention age when I'm talking about brain damaged snowbirds. Uh, now please read the enclosed article. You might find it enlightening. Well, the enclosed article is actually a <clears throat> Dear Abby column that appeared a little bit earlier in the month. I'll get to that momentarily. The stranger mentioned, I assume that's the stranger on the bench. The stranger mentioned... Hmm, Darn, the handwriting is so bad. The stranger mentioned something said your hateful remarks and acts were possibly called showbiz, but enough is enough, and that's spelled E-N-U-F. Pick on someone else. The lady said she would have liked to voice the above, but she feared you were screaming at her. <laughs> well, her fears were certainly well-founded. But let me share some of this Dear Abby column with you. Uh, apparently several days, several weeks ago, I don't know what it was, uh, dear Abby got into some type of brouhaha concerning younger, younger readers taking pot shots at older readers. And now this was, this column is primarily the, the older readers responding. And some of the things go like this. Let's see. I have a bone to pick with one of your readers who said that the seniors are the wealthiest people in the country. That line about how we spend our golden years really got to me. So we do nothing but travel and take cruises. I'm 72. And the only cruise I ever took was the one that began in San Diego and went to Hawaii, Okinawa, Guam, Midway, and Iwo Jima. Oh, isn't that great? He's talking about fighting the Second World War for us. 
Uh, here's another one. I'm a senior citizen age 73. My husband is 71. The younger generation has no idea of what we went through to get where we are today. We were first married uh, and lived in one room. We didn't own a car, had no help. Probably there weren't cars back then. Uh, let's see, had no help from our families and didn't expect it. We did without things we couldn't afford. We walked up the uh, hill to school both ways. Um, well, it's not actually in there. I had to wash diapers in the bathtub and hung them outside to dry, no matter what the weather was. No washing machines or dryers. Oh, the poor baby. We were thrilled when McDonald's opened up and hamburgers were only 15 cents and we could go out for dinner on special occasions. Sounds like that's the kind of people who go to McDonald's for dinner. Uh, let's see, there's another one here. Uh, in reading the letter from Christine, who complained about senior citizens getting discounts, she said there are more poor people in her age group, 24 to 35, than there are in the senior group. Then she quoted some statistics to prove the point. Uh, I was reminded of Mark Twain's famous quote, there are three types of lies, lies, damned lies, and statistics. Now, isn't that cute? Here's another letter. As a 75-year-old senior citizen, let me set the young ones straight. I earned my way since 1931. Like a lot of other guys during the Depression, I sent money home to my parents as soon as I could support myself. I married during the war, served at sea for six years. Ah, there it is again. He's fighting the war for us. Isn't that great? Uh, we bought a home and paid it off uh, in 35 years. We never owned a BMW or Mercedes or a Jaguar. That's why we no longer have mortgage payments. Okay. Well, first and foremost, <clears throat> let me address some of the points in the letter. Or actually, let me address some of the points in the in the column. Uh, they're all irrelevant. They really have nothing whatsoever to do with anything, and so that's the end of that. Uh, dear sir or madam, as the case may be, whoever the letter writer is, I'm not really sure. You are a classic, an absolutely, absolutely classic brain damaged snowbird, which utterly has nothing whatsoever to do with your age, only your narrow minded state of mind. Uh, and to prove the point. You sent me the Dear Abby column, like, you know, that's going to say, whoa, oh, give me a break, you know, here's Dear Abby, I'm going to shut up. Uh, there were several mentions of how your generation fought the Second World War, and that's really quite admirable, and I'm delighted that you're proud of it, you should be proud of it. But there were absolutely no mentions whatsoever of how your generation drove up, for example, housing prices with your reckless and, and careless speculation in the 1960s and 70s and even into the 1980s. There was no mention of that whatsoever, just how, you know, you, you fought the Second World War. There wasn't any mention of how you milked the system for literally all it was worth, how you had no problem whatsoever with the federal government helping you finance your house, how you had utterly no problem whatsoever with the federal government paying your tuition, how you had utterly no problem whatsoever with the federal government paying anything you could get them to pay for. There was no mention of that. Nor was there any mention of how you guys just loved to pass your your debt onto your grandchildren, how you have never paid your bills, how you have no intention of paying your bills when it comes to the federal government spending. Nor is there any mention of how you just upped and ran away from the problems that you created back home, how you basically looted and plundered cities and then moved to Florida. Nor is there any mention of how your sons were wasted because of your paranoid fear of the communists in Southeast Asia. There wasn't any mention of that. Nor is there any mention of how you got your suddenly conservative views and how you turned against labor that helped you, and how you turned against public education that educated your children, and how you stopped buying American, just to name a few of the things that were not mentioned in any of those letters. Amazing how the world was supposed to bend over backwards when you were trying to raise a family. But now that yours has grown, now that you are seniors, you're supposed to be able to live anywhere you want to live without being bothered with this generation's kids. Hey, you paid for your own, right? Yeah, along with everybody else. One of the letter writers spoke of how he raised his family without any help from anybody. Well, I guess he forgot about the public works projects that got this country back on its feet or the legislation that was advanced by organized labor that actually created jobs in this country or the government guarantees that stabilized the economy or the senior citizens of that day who contributed to their economy, who contributed to their dying breath instead of becoming parasites and complaining that they were owed something because they were elderly, and then spending their idle hours casting aspersions of the younger generation. You know, sometimes it's very hard to have much compassion for the elderly when you really sit down and examine the record. I mean, can you begin, can you begin to imagine a 60-year-old at the turn of the century expecting a discount because of his age? Uh, let me have uh, two bags of feed there, Joe, and uh, you want to take 10% off because I'm 60 years old? I mean, can you begin to imagine a 65-year-old in the 1920s joining an organized lobby 
Oh, you know, like the Association for the Retirement of Elderly People or something along those lines that actually lobbies for laws that will make life more difficult and lower the standard of living for their grandchildren? Yeah, I'd go go down and join that new organization that'll uh, make sure that the uh, people that live in the 1930s and 40s <laughs> live a hell of a lot less uh, good than I did. Can you imagine a 70-year-old of the 1930s who would adopt political views that deprive the nourishment of a child in order to subsidize the medical bills for elderly people who could afford to pay for them without any government help. Can you begin to imagine that happening? Neither can I. I can't begin to imagine it happening. Could you possibly, could you possibly begin to imagine a 75-year-old in the 1940s, a well-off 75-year-old who would take a government handout when his country was in severe financial need? Can you begin to imagine that? Neither can I. I wonder where we went wrong with our senior citizens. I wonder how it is that suddenly our senior citizens have not only turned into a rather selfish group of people, but also seem to have lost their sense of humor. Can you begin to imagine... Can you begin to imagine the senior citizens of the 1950s raising up a, a generation of children and grandchildren who wanted to put Ronald Reagan's face on Mount Rushmore? Imagine that one. So what I would ask you to do this afternoon is just basically fool around with one simple question for me. Just one simple question. Do we owe these people anything? Do we owe these so-called self-proclaimed senior citizens who have no sense of humor, who have no sense of remorse for what they have done to this country, do we owe them absolutely anything? Now, by the way, let me also hasten to point out that my generation isn't a hell of a lot better. My generation also doesn't like to pay their bills. My generation also likes to milk the, the well dry. And my generation also likes to cast dispersions. And I, I'm quite aware of that, and I'm quite ashamed of it. But I wonder if those of you who would consider yourselves to be senior citizens have the, the courage, have the, the guts to also admit to being ashamed of your generations because there are an awful lot of things that they've done that you should be ashamed of. I'm really glad that you had an opportunity to fight the Second World War and that you're so proud of it. But there were a hell of a lot of things that you were doing before, during, and after the Second World War that there, there's utterly nothing to be proud of. So, like I said, one simple question this afternoon. Do we owe these so-called senior citizens anything? And if so, what do we owe them? Let me give you the telephone numbers, okay? In Hillsboro, 990-9352-990 WFLA. In Pinellas, 461-9352-461 WFLA. Uh, Michael? Uh, hello? I'm sorry, what, Bob? Uh, just, just, just out of curiosity, since I can't see the board today, uh, uh, about how many hate calls have come in so far? Uh, half dozen. Is that all? Oh, that's all in there. Bob in from Pinellas County, believe it or not. Well, you know, well, I know, it's hard to believe. Of course, where else? 990-9352 in Hillsboro, 461-9352 in Pinellas. Take it away, Mike. Oh, by the way, you should see how much food Frank has here. I, I, I think Frank actually believes all of these stories about we do nothing but eat in this business. Unreal. Because they, they, not, uh... Not because, ma'am. For what? Not, not because, but what are you blaming them for? Because they engaged in and, uh, and, uh, nurtured the senior citizens for their votes. Because the, the oh, senior citizens are the only ones that vote. Second. Now, wait a second, honey. Let me see if I understand this right. Yeah. You're telling me that you sold yourself down the river... Because some evil politician came on. You were too stupid. No, I, I didn't sell myself the down the river. No, no I did not. No, I'm no, stating that the politicians do. They have something good in the senior citizens. Uh -huh. And because the uh, young well, people do not get out and vote, we're the only ones that vote. Ma'am, when, when Social Security was being set up, you were a young girl. Let, let your politicians try to do anything with Social Security and see what happens. It's one of the hallmarks of your generation is to blame it on somebody else. You see, that's, that's one of the things that your generation will take with them. I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. We don't, don't sit in that category. 
Mm -hmm. No, I don't. Oh, you don't agree with me. What's that? No, mean? because I because whatever we have, we work for, oh, and we sure, have the government for nothing. For, yeah, you work for you work for the subsidized yeah, right. well, we did. Is. Yeah, you work yeah. for the subsidized college education. No, I didn't. I put kids well, through college and I paid theory. the full amount. You seem to be the one who has forgotten it. Not no, me. no, don't give me that baloney. What baloney, I put honey? kids through school, and we and my husband went to school, and he yeah, paid nine dollars a week to get a college education. Don't give me that ways. baloney. Yeah. No, no. The, the politicians yes, caught the, politicians. the senior citizens, and now they're Lord. stuck with them. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Right, those politicians who made you go out. Yeah, and the vote damn for politicians. Them. They're well, the, ones. the ones that came over to your house with a gun and held it to your head and marched you right down to the polling place and said, "You vote for me, or else I'll, I'll shoot you." Well, people, people yeah. can't see beyond it. Yeah, people can't see beyond. Well, what does that mean? Because people are mesmerized by the nose? politicians. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Pardon? I said, are you trying to tell me that you're too stupid to see beyond beyond the end of your nose? Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, I'm saying well, a lot I of people know. You're don't. the intelligent one. It's everybody else who's stupid. Right? No. Oh. No, I'm not accusing anybody. You're not accusing Each anybody except the politicians. Looks at things and, um... I thought we were going to get into something that 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 was productive, but evidently you well, are, you have your own theory. point of view, and you won't accept somebody else's. Right. That's, right. That, that, that's what I'm known for right. is you know, not accepting nonsense. Right. It isn't nonsense. Yeah. No, yeah. it's not nonsense. Right. That's Just, right. It's a politician's fault, whatever that means. It is. Except Look at the great politicians we have. Right. All those people that Look at our you. government All today. All those people that forced you to vote for them. Because people are stupid. They vote well, with the same, except, except same you. people all the time. you. It's everybody else who's stupid. I'm not stupid, well, but I I'm know. not well, that... Well, I can tell that from just listening to you. Uh, You're so damn stupid, I wouldn't do well to call you stupid. Well, I'm sorry I called you. So I, I. Uh, I took up your time because I'm so damn stupid and what the hell, that, I uh, said three cents out of it. You're not even listening to what I'm saying. Madam, are you serious? She hung up on you, Bob. Isn't that amazing? Hmm. Well, be sure to mark it down. I still get the 43 cents. Ah, uh, 38. She was mad at you, so I don't think you get full credit, do you? Ah, uh, yes, I do. Okay. Is Tampa is next. Oh, hi, Tampa. You're on the air at 970. <laughs> okay, we will go to Tampa again. Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. Hi. I, I can support your idea. Uh -huh. I have watched my, my mother and my father and my in-laws who are have a lot of money they're very wealthy and whenever they're sick or whenever they're in the hospital you better believe they're not going to put out a penny to pay anything they don't have to you know who's going to pay for it the rest of us and they don't feel that they should have to put out anything they feel that they're, because they've worked hard all these years that the rest of us underneath them should support them and pay them even when they're they have hundreds of thousands of dollars in merrill lynch or stocks and whatever you know, I, I kind of wonder where they picked that up because their parents weren't that way no but I, I respect senior citizens. I, I see a lot of good. I love my, my parents. But I also can look and see that they're trying to milk the rest of us, but then they're trying to put us down at the same time. And I don't think it's right. I think if you can afford to pay your medical expenses, you should pay them. If you can't, then, then you deserve some assistance. Right across the line, it goes a lot uh, deeper than just medical expenses, I should think. Well, I agree. And when I see one individual that I'm very close to have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank and always trying to milk the system for every penny she can get, it ticks me off. It ticks me off, too. What are you going to do? I don't know. Start I getting you. smarter and vote for somebody better. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, vote for mom. That would make an interesting possibility there. Hang on, vote for your parents. What's up next, Michael? Next, we go to St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg, hi, St. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. <laughs> Hello, Bob. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm a senior citizen, and I'm on your side. Well, good. Uh, I, I live in a mobile home park here. Would be. I live in a mobile home park here, and I'm so damn fed up with these people, I want to sell Number one, when they st uh, when they had the uh, vote up, you know, to have the first five thousand dollars exempt on your homes, boy, they were against that. And uh, I I tried to get them to vote for that to help the younger people out, but they wouldn't do it. <laughs> and we got a swimming pool here. They even have a sign that says "No children be after 10 a.m." Well, again, you know, you go back to when they were younger, it would have been utterly unheard of. It would have been considered ridiculous, laughable, 
to have areas just for old people and areas just for young people. It would have been laughable when they were trying to raise a family. That's right. I raised a family, and I was a poor man, but uh, I sure as hell, uh, when I watch these people and what they have, and they don't even pay taxes on most of these places, and cry like hell. It's, it's truly shameful, and I should think that the majority, I would hope that the majority of people who would be properly uh, designated as senior citizens would be in complete agreement with what we're talking about, because I would hope that most people, regardless of their age, would be looking out for the future of the country, the future of their families. Well, when that boat went out there uh, about the $5,000 exemption, the, everybody pays on the first 5000 and then you get the $30,000 or $25,000 exemption. Why, these people were... Uh, they mobilized. They had more meetings and uh, stuff to get the people out to vote against that. It, it was. It really turned me off. Yeah, God forbid you should pay your own way in America. My right, goodness. right. We use the streets. We use everything. But they want these poor young people in St. Petersburg and everywhere that work for minimum wage to pay it all. Uh, thank you much, my friend. Okay, Bob. Take care. Nine nine zero nine three five two in Hillsboro, four six one nine three five two in Vanellis. Uh, Michael, what's it look like? Well, it looks. Uh, as far as the phones go, pretty grim right now. Bob, Bob you're missing something here, by the way. What? Uh, Hungry Howie's just came in. Yeah. And and their pizzas in the in the studio, the control room. And in fact, Ted Carreras is standing right here. Do you, can we can we take just a second here and, and talk about something? Oh, uh, what's that? Yeah, you'll go ahead, Ted. Bob, you know that uh, my duties have been somewhat lessened since you were uh, taking over this rather difficult afternoon shift, and I've tried to find a way to justify the enormous salary they pay me as your producer. And I think I've been able to come up with something. Um, I'm trying to solicit free food for the station. It looks like it's working so far. I, I just forgot that you were going to be out and unable to enjoy this one. This is disappointing. But, but anyway, uh, uh, here we are, and, and we're just having a grand old time. And I wish that you could have, uh, that you could be here to enjoy the, the Hungry Howie situation we have going on now with Dr. Judith Lombona is here. Do you remember the person who's going to be helping us with the Dick Norman Scholarship Fund? And uh, we have all sorts of good things going on, but uh, I think Dr. Judith Lombona could probably bring it out a little better than I could. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, you're missing a great pizza party in the Hillsboro Educational Partnership Foundation, Pinellas Education Foundation, and the public schools of 20 Florida counties are going to benefit by the Hungry Howie's promotional on Sunday, April 30th, from noon to 3 at all the Hungry Howie locations. And I'd like to turn you over now to Georgina. Hi. You missed it, boy. We're here with lots of pizza, Howie crust, flavored crust, and everything. We want to promote the world's largest pizza party, which is happening on Sunday the 30th. It's going to be at 75 different locations throughout Florida. The proceeds uh, that we are going to collect from our 75 locations throughout Central Florida will go directly to the local. They do a good job, Bob? Uh, yes, Teddy. Thank you very much. Uh, Michael, what's the situation on the phones now? He wants to know what the situation on the phones are. Situ okay, the situation on the phones is this. Line available in Hillsborough County and one in Pinellas. Why don't you get the numbers and we'll go into a break. Oh, sound? okay, sounds reasonable to me. 990-9352 in Hillsborough, 461-9352 in Pinellas. Hello, this is... Uh, Michael tells me that the phones are a little bit grim. I, I can remember back to last Friday. You know, do I have to keep reminding you people last Friday... Uh, as to what you said, let, let me give you the phone numbers one more time, 990-9352-990-WFLA. I mean, I think it's a very legitimate question. I think it's a damned legitimate question. Just what do you owe uh, people who tell you that they are senior citizens? Just what do you owe people that tell you that, hey, because I'm such and such an age, you should do this, you should do that for me. Michael, what's the story now? Uh, all the lines open are in, are in Hillsborough County right now on a call standing by from Clearwater. Okay, 990-9352 in Hillsborough. Hi, Clear, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Oh, that's incredibly interesting. Incredibly interesting. You know that was an older female that uh, that that I spoke with. I wouldn't be in the least bit surprised if it was. It was an older female. I wouldn't be in the least bit. See, it sounds like one of those people that uh, you know milked the country dry and now just doesn't give a damn about anybody. Hey, dear, you know, hope your milk's dry too. Uh, what story now, Mike? Mm -hmm. Just two drop-offs. Oh, just two drop-offs? What the hell? We'll just sit here and wait for them. I, I've got nothing better to do. I'm sitting here in Frank's living room. It's a lovely view. I couldn't care less. I get paid on the, you know. So, uh, nice cookies out here, Mike. 
Nice what? Cookies. Did you get the ice cold milk too? Uh, not yet. No, we're you know uh, they, they say it's in the refrigerator. I haven't really started in on the cookies yet. What kind of cookies? Oh, just all kinds of cookies. Italian cookies are flown in from New Jersey. They got fresh fruit. They got a belt plate over there all kinds of lunch meats and cheeses and oh yeah they must think we do literally nothing but eat literally nothing but eat okay well if you can tap dance a second i've got three lines ringing and uh tap dance a second yeah, for these yeah. three miserable people oh, come, on, on, come, come on come on i could come prefer on. more see even the callers are telling you to let me go to, yeah. let me go to work here okay i don't understand why i put up with cereal sometimes i really and truly don't I mean, I don't understand why I put up with you people sometimes. I really and truly don't. I mean, I thought we had an understanding last Friday. I was positive last Friday that we had an understanding. But, uh, you know, I guess we just have to keep twisting your little arms, if, if you know what I mean. But I'll twist your little arm every now and then. I think we got a live one. A live one? A live one. Whoa. Tampa. Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. What's happening, Bob? Bob? Was there something else that you had in mind, sir? Oh, no, 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 no. We just had a run-in with a brain-damaged snowbird next door. Hey, now you called to tell me about it. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not that desperate. Get rid of me, Michael. <laughs> not that desperate at all. Uh, I mean, you know, it's a damn legitimate question. And it's it's an important question, and it's something that, you know, people should give some consideration to. And I, I'm not interested in, you know, your run-ins with your brain-damaged next-door neighbors. If that's the best you can do, frankly, to hell with you. Frankly, to hell with you. I don't need it. You know, why don't you check out the, you know, the turkey at the end of the road? He's probably doing a fascinating show on, you know, silk plants versus uh, paper plants. Anything else, Michael? Not at this time, sir. Okay, I'll wait. <sighs> Every, every week. <clears throat> They're wising up yet, Mike? Starting to. Call from Tampa. Oh, my goodness. Hello there, Tampa. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Uh, this is uh, probably my favorite subject, and I'm glad you're around to it. That's why it took you 45 minutes to jump on the phone, huh? Huh? Well, you know. Yeah, I know. I just wanted you to get warmed up a little bit. Okay. But I tell you what, these old people, um, I don't know if it's because you get old, And uh, you were making reference to uh, the difference between older people now and older people 20, 30 years ago. Well, you know, I think that's what we were talking about while they are older now, but I think we're talking about people who were mean and stingy 30 years ago who are now mean and stingy now that they're old. One really has little to do with the other, I fear. Okay. Um, I don't think we, with most older people, I don't think we owe them much at all. Um, uh, uh Uh, current argument I hear from them is that they paid in on Social Security, you know, but when they paid in, it was, what, 1% of your income, then up in the 50s it went to 2% of your income. Um, well, if you're talking about back in the 30s and 40s, it was a little closer to 1.5%. Okay. You know, now we, you and I pay 12.5% of our income so they can go down and get a, a uh, pimple 5. taken off their nose for it's, free. It's 7.51%, and the employer pays 7.51%. Okay, well, if you're self-employed, you pay... Twelve and a half. Okay. Um, I every I used to be in a service business where we did a lot of service in uh, apartment complexes, mm -hmm. and the apartment complexes in the lower end of town. You go in there. We were servicing fire extinguishers, and you go in there, and it was all young people, and they're all gone all day. It was lower end apartments. Well, you go out on the key, out on the fancy schmancy uh, retirement places, and those apartments, it was all retired people. They're all home all day long. There's nothing wrong with them. They could be working. They're all collecting money from the government. They're all getting free medical. I just, there's just a real, uh, there's a real problem here with uh, the distribution of wealth from the government. Well, aren't you being just a little bit hard on all elderly people simply because you're talking about one retirement community that's well, relatively uh, wealthy by saying you owe your old people nothing? Well, um... <sighs> Okay, maybe I am being a little bit hard. I, I, for the, I think there's a very large population, and maybe it's because we live in Florida and we see uh, a larger percentage of people that are well off in their later years. You know, the ones that have no money that uh, retire in Ohio. Um, 
the ones that can afford to come down here buy a condo on the beach, maybe we're getting a disproportionate amount of older people that have some money. Well, it also sounds like we're getting a disproportionate amount of elderly people who are the ones griping the most because the ones that we hear, at least it seems to me, yeah. are those ones that you were talking about. We're not hearing from the ones back in Ohio trying to make it on 350 bucks a month. Right, right. I don't have any, any problem with somebody trying to make it on $350 a month. Well, I had a big problem with but, it. Well, well. I think that uh, I don't have any problem with the government helping people oh, that are okay. uh, medical-wise, um, uh, income-wise, for people that truly are making on $350 a month. But a lady called earlier, and she knows somebody that's got a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank. I know people in the same situation. They're 60, 70 years old. They're fine. They, they're collecting money. They got bunches of money in the bank. They go to the doctor, and I pay for it. I just don't think it's right. I don't think it's right either because there's just too many people who are trying to make it on that 350 month as we just talked about in Ohio. There are too many people who are between the ages of like 25 and, and 60 who are trying to raise families and make it on not a hell of a lot more. It's outrageous. It is utterly and completely and, in, and entirely outrageous. Well, the but thing simply is, because people think that they have reached a certain age, they're entitled to certain things uh, like discounts at the, at the drugstore yeah. just because they're Doesn't 60 years old. Doesn't that burn you? It burns the hell out of me. Uh, well, the thing is, now it's getting to a point where you can't do anything about it. You know, that old lady who called that said, you know, we're the ones that vote, we're the ones that vote. The, a large block of retired people do vote. And it's not only the retired people that are voting, it's the guys that are, are, are pushing 50 and 55, and they're looking out there and saying, hey, man, it ain't going to be long since I'm finally going to start collecting. I've been paying in this all all time. I'm finally going to start collecting. Those people are not going to vote against uh, taking benefits away from people that can actually well, afford the, not to have them. But one of the things that they fail to, for, for the, uh, they fail to remember is that they haven't been paying in for their future retirement. They have been paying in for the current retirement of their parents. Right. Who paid in virtually nothing. Right. Well, you know, people don't every care. Every I put in has gone to support my mother and my father. Right. Well, all they're thinking about now is what am I going to get? You know, they're, they're not thinking, you know, this justification of, uh, well, I paid in. You know, it's a bunch of crap because they go to the, they'll go to the doctor three times and all of a sudden, you know, all the money they paid in for 30 years is used up. Well, let me bring you back again to the original question. What do we owe our elderly? I don't think, you know, I think we owe our elderly the same thing we owe our kids. We owe our elderly the same thing we owe any other person in this country. And whether they're old, whether they're young, whether they're black, whether they're queer. You know, I don't think we owe somebody anything more because he's 65. Nine nine zero nine three five two in Hillsboro, four six one nine three five two in Pinellas. Thank you, caller. Bob, just want to say thanks for the pizza. It's delicious. Mayor wants more police. Good guess there. Uh, sitting in Frank's living room. Uh, Frank, uh, I noticed your cars look a little dirty as I drove in. Yeah. Uh -huh. I haven't been listening to me about the Grand Prix car wash, have you, Frank? No. There's a lot of you people out there that still haven't caught on to the Grand Prix car wash. I cannot begin to imagine why, because you just simply cannot do any better than the Grand Prix car wash. I can sit here and go through some, you know, specifics and tell you that they use this and that they use that and that the machines are made by such and such and so forth and so on, but I think probably the best thing to convince people to use the Grand Prix car wash is to tell them the simple truth, and that is the Grand Prix car wash doesn't just want you in there this week, they want you back next week, too. And so, consequently, they are prepared to make you happy. They're prepared to not only do a good job, but just in case something goes wrong, they're not going to let you out of there until you're totally and completely satisfied. I don't know that you can do any better any place than the Grand Prix Car Wash. Three locations to serve you in Clearwater, 1880 Gulf to Bay Boulevard, right across from the high school. In Seminole, 10471 Park Boulevard. That's about a half a block east of Seminole Boulevard. And in South Tampa, 3622 Gandhi, a half a block east of the Crosstown in Tampa, which, of course, that's the Grand Prix Car Wash to the stars. 25% off any package wash this week when you go in at the Grand Prix, as well as 25% off your next package wash at the Grand Prix. Fair enough? Fair enough. 990-9352 in Hillsboro. 461-9352 in Pinellas. A relatively simple concept today that seems to be just absolutely stumping the audience. Uh, what are you talking about? I don't know. Which is, uh, in essence, you know, what, what do we owe our, our seniors? which was triggered by a silly letter that I got yesterday, and it seemed like a great idea at the time. How did I know that, you know, you people were going to be standing around still thinking about poor old Morton Downey and whether or not he was attacked by the nasty kids? Uh, Michael, what's the story? Phones look great. Tampa. Would the phone, would the phone look great? Yeah, they're all Hello, up. Bob. <laughs> uh, hello, Tampa. You're on the air at 970 uh, WFLA. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm a senior citizen. 
Uh-huh. And I, I paid 43 years Social Security. Great. And maybe when I was paying, your, I was paying for your grandmother and that other man's grandmother. No, I was paying for my grandmother. And You're something else. Why don't you all complain sometimes about the money that they mm-hmm. take from the taxes, from your uh-huh. taxes, for to make bombs and, and things for war? Yeah, I do that, compl- That's I where they're spending that. the why, money. Why are you trying to change the subject? No, I already told you about uh, the Social Security. Oh, but you paid that I paid for, years for your grandmother for your and his grandmother. Mm-hmm. And, no, you and you, all, you all never complain about the bonds and things that they get all the money for that. Yeah, we are there again. We try to, to change the subject. To make rich, the you try to change the subject away from the fact that your generation has been extremely selfish. That your generation has milked this country dry, and now you want to blame it on somebody else. Now, let's stick with the real topic, lady, huh? I'm not blaming nobody. I'm just saying that you all don't protest about the things that Get you should protest. Get her off protect. the air, Michael. I know, you know, I'm tired of listening to her. Who do we have now? Try another one from Tampa. Another one from Tampa. Hi, you're on the air, 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. Hi. Hi. Um, last year, I worked on a, a project called Future Problem Solving with my students, and one of the problems we worked on was the elderly. Mm-hmm. And one of the most interesting statistics that I read was that the wealthiest group in our nation is the 55 to 64 year old, mm-hmm. and the second wealthiest group is 64 to 75. So that's where the money is, not with us young people who are working very hard to support them. Well, you say that's where the money is uh, uh, amongst some of those people. It is one of the, one of the things that I find to be the saddest in this entire affair is that the so-called elderly seem to have utterly no compassion whatsoever for members of their own generation who are not, uh, you know, having it made in the shade. Or for anyone else, for that matter. Mm -hmm. They um, seem to think that everyone owes them something because they worked hard, but I think all of us, by the time we reach 65, will have worked very hard also. Well, of course. And I don't know if there'll be so much compassion for us. Never no, mind. Hey, I'm Social 43 Security. years old. I've worked hard all of my life. With the, you know, without a, does that get me a 10 percent discount at the Ecker Drugstore? No, it's not, it sure why not? doesn't. Okay, I can see giving a 10 percent discount on medicine because a lot of the elderly are chronically ill. Well, then let's give a 10 percent discount on medicine to the youthful because a lot of them. Well, what I was going to say for... is that many of the elderly have to pay a couple of hundred dollars a month. I can buy that, mm-hmm. but I can't see 10 percent on everything else. And I can't see them going into perhaps, say, a, a Barnett Bank and then being very, very rude to the people who work there and demand maybe 15 or 20 copies of a piece of paper that the, that the cashier then has to run and do for free. Those kinds of things bother me. Be gracious about it. You know, you are getting, I think, your dues, and I think you should be gracious to everyone else. What about the elderly person who doesn't have the large pension and is trying to survive on Social Security and is maybe buying dog food to eat because he can't afford anything else? And I've seen that quite a few times. Well, I've never seen anybody actually buying dog food to eat. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Oh, I have. But but again, I would go back and question where are these people in speaking out for their own generation who are in terrible need? I hear an awful lot of people with relatively secure incomes who own their own homes who are crying, oh, my cola was only 3.5% this year. Mm-hmm. The hell with your 3.5% cola when you're, when you're doing okay. What about that little old lady in South Philadelphia who's getting 325 bucks a month to live well, on? She know, can't do it. Don't you find that they're very self-righteous about it? They kind of give the... And I see this with my own dad, who makes more money now between his pension and his Social Security than he ever did working. And he'll tell you, well, I really worked hard, and well, Paul, I let saved... Me jump in, let me jump in at this point, because not only do I hear what you're saying, but I also hear the music in the background, which means that we're both going to get knocked off pretty soon. Back there, fun seekers. It is a Wednesday, April the 26th, 1989. Uh, the magnificent Lasseter sitting in Frank's living room. Frank lives out to, well, we can't, we won't say exactly where, but someplace here in Tampa. And uh, just, just kind of, you know, talking with the people like we would normally do, even if we were sitting in the studio. I got a letter yesterday. The letter, you know, frankly ticked me off. The letter was from some old geezer who was, you know, trying to tell me how grateful I should be because, you know, her generation fought the Second World War. Whoopie do. You know, there were a lot of generations prior to that that fought other wars and how we should basically, you know, take care of her and her kind and not have anything to say about them, just, you know, just put up with them, which frankly takes me off a little bit, to put it as mildly as I can possibly put it. 
And so, therefore, I would ask you, you know, what, what do you think you owe the so-called senior citizens? Michael, what do the phones look like? The phones coming through a newscast look terrific. Okay, well, I'll get the numbers anyway. What the hey? I, you know, try to remember them. 9909. Isn't it? Michael, do you realize I cannot give the phone numbers in the studio without looking at them? You need that little chart in front of you, exactly, don't you? Exactly, but I can sit here and give them, and I don't have them written down. 9909352 in Hillsborough, 4619352. There are abuses. Make no bones about it. You know, I just get to wonder if I had a, 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 an idea comes to my mind. If Ronald Reagan, who basically two, three million dollars a year, if he collects his Social Security check, I wonder if an yes, Iacocca, yeah, collect their insurance. Pay. Okay, there no, are. I, no, Iacocca does not because he is not. Uh, yeah, yeah, that age. Okay, you know what I mean. But another thing too is I take offense to is you know a guy and I don't mean anything by it, but guy remind me of an asshole that called about two or three calls ago. You know. <laughs> He, he brought out something so important to all of us. We vote. You're damn right I vote. Now, if the younger generation doesn't care to vote, after we push through, a, you know, one of the, the leanest amounts of votes are 18-year-olds. They never vote. That's right. Yeah, and, and, you know, in other words, hey, that's your problem, not my problem. As for taking care of anyone, I would say this. I would basically look toward how I wanted my mother and father taken care of. Uh, another thing I asked this man, you know, don't uh, uh, condemn the successful men who basically took advantage of everything as he would. He's in the business of repairing fire. Uh, what are they, fire extinguishers? Hell, you know, when he gets to be 65, I want to know where he stands on this. I mean, I get this condemning of successful people, and it shouldn't be that way. You know, we're in the greatest I don't think anybody's country. condemning successful people. I believe that there are a number of people, though, who would condemn successful people who are still standing around with their hands out at the well, expense of people who wrong. are not successful. Yeah, that's wrong. Make no bones about it. But, gee, don't, you know, of course we're generalizing. Don't get me wrong. But, gee, don't condemn. Uh, I don't care to condemn my generation. I think it was a, a, a fairly Why good not? generation. A good generation that milked this country dry? No, it, I don't know about milking it dry. But, you know, hold on one second, Bobby. You know, when I, when, I don't know why, but we didn't, thank God, we did not have what appears to be. We had an alcoholic problem as, as we go through. But, you know, in the 50s, we were God. I mean, you know, I worked for Westinghouse International, and we were simply God, this country. We saved the world. We did it all. And, you know, people in my generation were working then. And I really felt that this country was, it was tops. In other words, if you had uh, three billion or four billion people on this earth making a vote, three and a half billion would want to live in this country. And you know, we've handed it over, and I'm not going to condemn the kids in this country right now, but we've handed it over to a generation, possibly in your category, the 40-year-olds and the 30-year-olds. And you know, we're getting more and more into a period of becoming never a second-rate power. Never could I say that. But God, you know, uh, I'm going to say this, unless maybe the possibility of the younger generation turning around, we're all going to be working for the Japanese and the Germans very shortly. Whose fault is that, sir? Pardon? Whose fault is that? Oh, yeah, well, I no, it, you it's have, your sir? fault. I'm well, going to say this, not, not, not your have, fault. Sir? I don't mean it your way. What kind of car do you have, sir? I have a Camaro. And mm -hmm. I've always purchased, try my best to purchase, uh, 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 basically, United States products. Did you vote for know. Ronald Reagan, sir? Pardon? Did you vote for Ronald Reagan? I voted. No, I never did vote for the man, although I, did, I think he did a good job. He did a good job. I think so. He did a good job turning this country into a country that makes stealth bombers, a country that makes laser weapons, while the Japanese became a country that made VCRs, toasters, and iron. But... The uh, problem me, is, is that, you see, sir, we can't sell the stealth bomber to anybody, uh, but the course. Japanese that, can sell the VCRs. You're right. You know, you're bringing up mistakes. But still in all, let me also say I'm this. bringing up mistakes. That was a mistake. But let me say this to you. The man took over. Maybe it was timing. I brought this up only yesterday to, I think, Joe Floyd. The man, and I, I'm basically, I feel myself as a, an independent Democrat. But the man did come into this country. If, if he had left it up to Carter, I think, I don't know what the hell would have happened to this country. But here's my point. Well, what, the man what do you mean, came sir? In, what, what, what was uh, Jimmy Carter doing that would have caused oh, the country on. to go to I, rack and ruin? Or oh, rack please. And ruin? We, we were being spit on. Being spit on? Yeah, I mean, when, when all of a sudden oh, this guy was a turban. Oh, you mean somebody insulted you. No, no. I'm talking about being held prisoner when this guy was a turban. Uh, uh, sir, uh, what sir, the hell of a hit that let me give you a quote. Go ahead. Uh, that was made somewhere uh, in the neighborhood of January 21st, 1981. Right. There will never be a U.S. citizen held hostage under my administration. 
There were none the day that the man who said that came into office. There were nine the day that he went out. And, sir, the day that he went out, he never once acknowledged them. Jimmy Carter, sir, at least acknowledged his hostages. He didn't pretend they didn't exist. Ronald Reagan, sir, pretended as though they didn't exist. But what did Carter you do You should about be ashamed them? of them. No, I... The same oh. damn thing, sir, that, oh, that Ronald Reagan did. Oh. Hey... Except for one minor problem. Well, Carter acknowledged his hostages every single day. Ronald Reagan didn't. Ronald Reagan has a despicable record, sir, oh, on know. hostages. Well, maybe... Listen, let me say this to you, What uh, Ronald Reagan did uh, to get his hostages back, sir, was sold weapons to the Ayatollah Khomeini. When he took off... Yeah, the... I know you don't want to hear about it, sir, so I, I don't, don't want to hear... hear about it. Oh, I really? don't listen to you. I mean, in a sense, many times we're of the same opinion. But oh, you, well, was, point... you think that's going to get you a free ride or something? No, I don't want a free ride. Good. <laughs> I don't, Robert. I'm just expressing something to you. The guy came in... And I have to give him credit for certain things. He came into 36% unemployment in Detroit. 36% unemployment? Yes, in Detroit. In oh, Detroit. really? In Detroit. He mm. came into something like the 17 to 21% uh, of uh, interest rates. He came uh -huh. into a complete, uh, in other words, Sir? a chaotic situation Sir? that existed. Go ahead. Sir, what did he do to lower interest rates? I, all I know is that I'm paying much less in well, interest rates. Well, sir, what rates. did he do to lower interest rates? I, I'm not that much of an economist. Well, then, sir, all I know is Jimmy Carter he left to raise, office, we were sir, much better. Sir, what did Jimmy Carter do to raise interest rates? I have no idea. Is, but it, they is were there, there a possibility, sir? Is there a very strong possibility that neither man had anything whatsoever to yeah. do with interest rates? Yeah, I can go that. Oh, well, then if that's the case, sir, and if that's what you admit to, why are you implying that Ronald Reagan lowered interest rates? No, I'm not. Well, sure you are, sir, because no. you're telling me when he came in, interest rates were such and such. The implication right. is very strong that he lowered interest rates. But, I mean, you think he did absolutely, and I, we really got off the subject from Social Security, but, Bob, you think he did absolutely nothing in eight years. Would you say that? He did absolutely nothing in eight years. Oh, he no, he sir, he did a great him? deal. Oh, my and God, he did so much guy. that you and I are going to curse him for in just a very you short period of time. Well, could be. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, there there are people who will make who will make trek from their houses to wherever he is finally buried <laughs> so that they can dance and wee wee on his grave. <laughs> All right, you take care. Thank you very I'll much, sir. Oh my God, just just I, I did makes my heart pound. I mean, I'm I'm getting palpitations. I'm starting to get vapors here around my neck. Just the mere the mere thought of Reagan bashing again. How I miss it so very 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 much. You know whose music that is, don't you? Uh, yeah, we're yeah. A minute, we're a, we're a, a minute late. I, I thought you were getting I thought you were getting vapors and goosebumps because you were about to talk to me, Bob. Yeah, right, Gary. Uh -huh. I, uh, I frequently get I, I I frequently break into a sweat when I think about talking to you. You, you notice how I haven't even complained to Mr. Maseko about you being two minutes late going to me here because you're on remote. It was everything. not two minutes late, Gary. You know that, and I do also. Shut up, stereo. It was a not. It was not two minutes late. Minute well, here's here's WFLA's dangerous bronze uh, washboard, Gary McHenry with his airborne WFLA dangerous report. Traffic along Dale Mabry. WFLA. Hey, Bob. Hi. Uh, just had, I just felt a very strong need to call you today about what we owe our elderly. Great. Uh, I'm 34 years old, and I have a grandmother who's 90 years old, and I also have a mother who's 55. Mm -hmm. uh, the grandmother, uh, I really feel badly for her and for all elderly that are in the similar straits and the fact that she really gets very minimum amount from Social Security. Uh, yeah, a lot of women are in that position. Yeah, well, she, she worked for a long, long time, even after retirement age. She lives in subsidized housing. She gets meals on wheels because she has had a fractured hip and such. And I really, I really empathize for them. I worked home health care for a while, so I really know what a lot of people's homes look like inside. And to tell you the truth, the standard of living is really pathetic considering what kind of a economy we're living in. Uh, Supposedly uh, a very rich just, society. Let me take a wild guess here. She's the kind of woman that you have never, ever, ever once heard say, I deserve more. No, she's never said anything. Never said anything at all. But then on the other hand, I have a mother who's 55 years old. Uh -huh. uh, probably has a family income of about 150 to $200,000 a year. Uh, she just turned 55. And you should hear her brag about being offered senior citizen discounts. I mean, here's a woman who can very well afford anything that she wants. Mm -hmm. 
is she picks these people up on these discounts. I think it is a sin and a crime that they get away with things like that when my grandmother is just scraping by. And, and frankly, I'm, I'm scraping by, and my income is fairly decent. Well, there are also an awful lot of grandkids just kind of scraping by, basically because of what kind of a mess they have inherited. Exactly. And, you know, I have talked with my mother. I, I, I have learned very quickly that you don't talk politics with, with her. Uh, she's a Republican, and I'm a Democrat, and we don't see eye to eye. I love her dearly. We're best of friends, but you just don't talk about it. I have talked with her about the situation of the elderly, subsidized housing, things like that. Mm -hmm. And in the course of conversation, I have said, oh, you know, people like Ronald Reagan shouldn't be able to collect Social Security. You should have seen the fire in her eyes. She let me have it. And, of course, you know, I've listened for you a long time, and I've heard you talking about how... I mean, hey, come on, Ronald Reagan, you know, liberated people in concentration camps at the end of the Second World War. He should uh, get yeah. Social Security. I mean, she loves Ronald Reagan. She should get the Ronald same kind of Reagan. Social Security as, you know, the, those people that he liberated. Yeah, we they know, were, you know, his imagination, and then Social Security should be part of his imagination, too. Yeah, we well, you know, she loves Ronald Reagan. She just cannot see how I can be a Democrat. And I have talked with my grandmother about it. She is re voting Republican. I said, Graham, how can you vote Republican? I said, here, you're just barely making ends meet. Uh, you could use all sorts of social services, yet you will re vote for a Republican government. How can you do that? Well, I guess I really shouldn't, but it's habit. Well, she probably has a lot of money stashed underneath a mattress, and she's kind of looking forward to, you know, the reduced no. uh, capital gains tax. No, she they really doesn't. Time, I mean, it, it's really a sin, Bob. I, I, I see both ends of it, that my, that my mother is well off, that my grandmother is uh, b below the poverty level. And the problem I see in this country, it goes to business, and every facet of our economy is just plain old greed. Well, on that point, I've got to cut it off, but I thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye, Bob. -bye, Speaking of plain old... Don Richards standing by with uh, with or at, as the case may be, the WFLA News. Nine three five two in Hillsboro four six one nine three five two in Pinellas. If there is a rhyme and reason to all of this, by the way, I'm sitting in Frank's living room. We'll tell you about that a little later. If there is a rhyme and reason to this, it would be you know what exactly is it that we owe people? simply because they turn a certain age, simply because they turn 60 or 65 or 70 or whatever it may be. Michael, what are the phones? Uh, the, phones like? the phones are full. They've been full for over an hour now. Uh, let's go to Clearwater. Clearwater. Hi, Clear. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. Hi. Uh, Bob, another group of robbers taking our tax money are these medical clinics that yeah, are overbilling. That's, that's great. That's not exactly what I asked. I said, what do we owe our people who become senior citizens? I'm, you know, I'm not particularly interested in your vendetta against medical clinics today. What is your question? Uh, Michael, who else do we have on the air? We can go to Zephyr Hills next. Zephyr yeah. Hills it is. Hi, Zephyr. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hey, Bueno Tardes. How are you? Uh, fine, thank you. Good, good. Having lots of cookies and milk, are you? Yeah, sure am. Good, good. Uh, I don't really feel that anyone is owed anything uh, just because they turn a certain age. Uh, one of the things that galls me the most, I think, is the Blanton and open age discrimination associated with senior discounts because a guy is 55 or whatever, he can buy something 10 or 15 cents better than I can because I'm only 36. Well, I'll tell you, that bank that's so proud of talking about their senior discounts lost my account. Oh, I'd be, if I had one there, I would be the first one to leave, too. I, I guarantee you. You know, I, I, I work in Zephyr Hills, and if we predicated our pricing on, uh, on senior discounts, I might as well just go across the board and just cut the pricing, period, across the board, because that's the bulk of our business anyway. Mm. And uh, yet they feel that we owe everything, uh, owe them stuff. Uh, they, they have two homes. You know, they have a home up north, they have a home down here. Well, not all of them do, but well, I Well, but uh, um, qu quite a few of them in this particular area. Well, the, obviously, the, this bank, the, the market that they are targeting to are the ones that do own two right. homes. Right. And then they, uh, they turn around, they have the, uh, oh, what the heck am I trying to say here? Uh, they want reduced taxes. Okay, they want to reduce taxes on their homes and so forth, but yet they consume water. Uh, their cars, they want you know their cars uh, burn fuel. They use up their road. They uh, you know they want all these different breaks, but they use all the goods and services that everybody else has, and it comes back down to where you and I are, are subsidizing it. Uh, when many of them are more than able to, uh, to to fend for themselves. Now I don't I don't have a problem with taking care of someone who cannot take care of themselves. 
Um, you know, it may sound like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, but uh, like the 90-year-old well, grandmother, I can, I, can, uh, I can understand that. Mm-hmm. And we're, you know, for the most part, not talking about people who can't take care of that's themselves. That's right, that's right. And, and so I just wanted to, wanted to clarify that. But, but to say that just because someone turns uh, 62 or 65 that we owe you this, uh, I don't think so. I don't think... Uh, how close if, are you to 62, by the way? What's that, sir? How, you, how close are you to that magic number? Oh, well, I'm 36, so i got a ways to go yet. Mm, okay. I mean, it'll be here probably before we both know it. Well, that's the way it's been going for me so far. <laughs> So I feel that uh, I, I would like to think that, that down the road that, uh, you know, the way I'd like to do it, I would like to see uh, when it comes to the, what they withhold for Social Security, I don't mind taking care of some of the folks that helped get us to where we are. Whether it's good or bad, what situation we're in right now, they did, you know, they, they, a lot of them did help and they, they did fight in the big one and all this kind of stuff. And if they can't take care of themselves, okay, fine, let's help them out a little bit. But I think that I should be able to take a portion of that money and in invest it myself without well you know, for, i don't feel social security is going to be there for you or me bob sure it will it doesn't print the money well yeah they'll print yeah it'll be worth even no, less no, than what it is today now that's, what we're, that's in essence what we're doing now that's well this is very money. true you're absolutely right and uh but in, it's going to be is more worthless than it is now uh you know sure you know by then uh, with adjustments for inflation social security will probably be eighty five hundred dollars a month maybe you know that's a ridiculous figure but it could be Sure. It could be. And uh, the average guy might be making $350,000 a year, but, you know, still doesn't buy anything more than two hamburgers and a french fry or something. That's you know? right. And uh, so, you know, I don't feel that we actually owe, owe them, that we should be able to, uh, you know, to go along and if they take care of themselves, they need to take care of themselves. Just because you turn 65, nobody owes you nothing. This country okay. is set up. What you earn is what you get. Uh, on that point, I thank you very much. <laughs> Last time, two minutes this time, that's uh, three and a half total minutes wasted, waiting for Bubba Lassiter to finish eating his cookies and go to the very important traffic information. Of course, it's probably the producer, Mike Serio's fault anyway, for not prompting Bob. Hello? Oh, oh, Gary, is that Hi, your Bob. song I hear in the background? Hey, how are you? Yes, about to run out. <laughs> oh, just fantastic, Gary. Uh, yourself? Oh, boy, great. Okay. Well, why don't you give us one of those dangerous traffic reports? Okay, I think I'll do that, Bob. We have uh, traffic stacked up along Skipper Road, an accident. Uh, okay, well, I... I'm sorry, Michael, but I'm sitting here. You see, Frank's got a fantastic view uh, uh, looking uh, over on a lake. And... Right, I've heard you talk about it during the breaks. Oh, you've been listening. Of course. Oh, of course. Oh, in that case, I'm going to tell everybody it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Michael. You didn't tell Thank them your birthday, sir. did you, Michael? No, I didn't, sir. No. Well, I've you... gone out of my way to stay away from that today, sir. Well, I appreciate that, but I figured, you know, if it really, really got mean and grim, uh, you know, we, we could uh, probably just, uh, uh, I hear you breathing deeply. Sighing. Sighing? Are you looking at the girly book again? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Tampa. Hi, Tampa. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yes, I'd like to answer your question. Go for it. Nothing. Why not? I think the question should be, what do they owe us? I'm 21 years old, and I'm just starting off, and you know what? I am really scared. Why, just because you're starting off, you know, something like no. $30,000 in debt? <laughs> exactly. They owe us the national debt and then some. I mean, look at the situation they put this country in. I'm 21. I vote, yeah. and I have voted for the last two years. Who'd you vote for last time? <laughs> Bush. B- 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 Bush, did I hear you say? I didn't really want to vote for either one, but, you know, uh, you got to do one or the other. Yeah, that's true. Um, so you voted for the guy that wants to cut the taxes of the wealthy. I'm sorry? You voted for the guy that wants to cut the taxes of the wealthy even further. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, I pay Social Security... And I'm probably never going to see it again. They owe me for that. They owe my children for that. Um, I'm paying higher medical costs because of their greediness and money that they should have had over the 50 years that they worked, that they should have built up some kind of security for themselves that they are taking away from me and my future children. And um, I really think the question should be what they owe us. Okay, interesting. Uh, thank you very much. I only hope my generation gets their heads together and does something and starts voting and does something about this now so that two generations down on down the line, the talk show hosts are not going to be bringing up the same subject. Well, I would I would hope so, too. As a matter of fact, I pointed out a number of times prior to the previous election that, you know, Mr. Bush was trying to lower the taxes of the wealthy and that he was, you know, dancing around with a lot of nonsense and talking about 
Oh, pledges of allegiance and that kind of stuff, you know. But but uh, you know, maybe next time around we'll get you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Nine nine zero nine three five two in Hillsboro four six one nine three five two in Pinellas. Michael. Tarpon Springs. Tarpon Springs. Hi there, Tarp. You're on the air at nine seventy WFLA. Good afternoon, Bob. Happy birthday, Mike. Um, I wanted to answer. Did you send him a new sponge? <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, I think uh, the lady that called a while ago and her grandmother was ninety and barely scraping by, and her mother, her income was one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. But, you know, families used to take care of their own pretty yeah. much. And there's got to be some, you know, they're just letting these people basically fend for themselves now and going about their own business. Well, that's one of the problems of Social Security and especially the fact that we have uh, expanded the program, making it possible for children to walk away from their obligation. And I do believe it is their obligation to help with the support of their parents when their parents reach a point where they can no longer work. Oh, very much so. My, my mother's 60, and she's alone, and I know at some point in, in her life, I'm going to have to step in. And on top of that, we live in a state that is based upon an economy that uh, did that very thing, that encouraged families to break up, that encouraged uh, the elderly to come down here and form elderly ghettos. Uh, again, one of the things that I think is very, very wrong in this country. We've got to get back more to, to the family, and we've also got to get some kind of system where we can stop these people that do have a lot of money from, from collecting these things. Well, you know... You know, if they can afford sure to pay... Sure sounds good to me, and it seems to sound good to a lot of other people. Why isn't it happening? I do wonder. Well, it's going to be harder and harder as the time goes on, because the elderly population is going to get larger and larger. So we've got to get it started and... and to change now, I think. I remember the first time I, I did a show like this. It was back in the old days at WPLP. And I recall getting an utterly incensed caller on the air, a man who indicated to us that he was rather wealthy, and I believe him, and uh, told us how you know he was just taking his uh, 1100 and whatever dollars a month it was and, you know, in essence, throwing it in a drawer for his grandchildren and, you know, said to me, and to hell with you, I, you know, that's what I'm going to do with my money. Well, that's good, because his grandchildren will probably never see any Social Security. Yeah, actually, you're right. They probably will need it. Well, well thank you, caller. Well, thank you, Bob. Okay, Don Richards, with any kind of luck whatsoever, standing by at the WFLA news desk, ready, willing, and able to read us news. Ileana Martinez attends classes in the... Frank's living room talking amongst ourselves and hardly paying any attention whatsoever to what's going on back there at the radio station. Let me tell you about Calves Cove. Well, not even, not so much even tell you about Calves Cove, but let's talk about special evenings at Calves Cove. Virtually any time that you would show up there, it would be a special evening, and it's a great place to go for anniversaries and birthdays and I love you kind of dinners and all of that kind of good stuff. But this coming Friday night, April 28th, it's even more special at Calves. It's their fourth birthday or fourth anniversary, if you will. Now, almost everybody from FLA is going to be out there. There'll be hors d'oeuvres and special drinks and special dinners, and I would hope that we could find you, too. Yeah, why not? Hey, it's a great time to get to know each other, right? It's a great time to go out and have a nice dinner, and it's uh, their fourth anniversary. You will not be disappointed by Calps Cove. I promise you that. No matter what day you go there, you will not be disappointed. Phenomenal menu, great service, table side service. But the great thing about Cobb's Cove is you're never going to feel put out of place. It's it's a place that somehow has managed to make you feel special and make you feel like the most important customer in the entire world and never makes you feel like you're you somehow not as good as they are. No, Cobb's Cove. Let me give the address, please. 13155 Gulf Boulevard in Madeira Beach. Their telephone number is 393-3448. Now, aside from all of the other stuff that's going on Friday, there's uh, there's the piano bar, which is always a great piano bar, and for some bizarre reason, I can't begin to imagine why they're going to have Lionel stop by and uh, play his guitar with, with Carl at the piano bar, so that, that will be a little bit later on on Friday evening. Uh, Lionel will be there. Uh, with uh, and maybe even uh, his, his accompanist, uh, Mr. Booth, and will be there with his harmonica. You just never know what's going to happen at Calps Cove. It's going to be an incredible night, Friday night, please. If we have never met, if if you'd like to meet again, whatever the case may be, stop by Calps Cove, 13155 Gulf Boulevard in Madeira Beach. Michael, what's the story? Uh, we've got two ways we can go here. Two ways we can go, we, huh? two, we can do a real serious call. Yeah. Or we can take the the, call, the last caller from yesterday's show. Uh. His, his mama. <laughs> 
Oh, Jay, your choice. Sure, what the hell. Jay Tampa. Uh, oh, hi there, Tampa. You're on there at 970 WFLA. Uh, well, hello, Tampa. Hello. Oh, uh, yes, hi there. My husband and I are in our 80s. We've uh -huh. never received or expected anything from for nothing. Oh, uh, come on. I'll bet you check the mailbox about the third of the month, right? Yes, but my husband started pacing. Paying Social Security when it started. Mm -hmm. At that time, I would have rather kept our money because we mm -hmm. could have paid. We could. We would have saved it anyhow. And yeah. That fellow that called in. You know, and I'll, where I'll, is I'll all bet, these and I'll, and I'll bet. And I'll bet your parents collected Social Security, right? My parents have been dead for years. Well, I, I'll bet they collected Social Security. So, Social Security for years as well, right? No. Well, what do you My mean? My husband no? and I are in our eighties. Well, I appreciate that, but you had parents, right? My parents died at fifty-five and sixty-one. Uh huh. What year in was that? Nineteen twenty-nine and forty-six. They never 1946, collected. Nineteen forty-six. They never collected, huh? Well, that's amazing. Since Social Security was. Well, she was only sixty-one on. years old. Mm -hmm. Do you, have any brother, do you have any brothers and sisters or maybe cousins or things like that? Grandparents, maybe? No, that's where my the money God, went, we're in our 80s. Well, great, but that's where the money went. Anything else? I, the fellow that called in, I want to know, he said that senior citizens could go get something taken off of the nose for nothing. We're paying Medicare. It isn't too high, and it's mm -hmm. raised, and I don't mind that. Uh, how much do you pay a month? But I am How much paying, do you pay a month? Pardon? How much do you pay a month in Medicare? It's 30-some. I don't know exactly. 30-something a month. Madam, do you realize that it costs my board operator, Michael Serio, over $300 a month for his medical insurance? I'm paying... And it has a hell of a deductible... I'm paying 145 cents. Oh, that's just for myself, for my Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Oh, really? I thought it was just thirty dollars a month you're paying. That's Medicare. Yeah, I know. What's Medicare cover? And Medicare, and Medicare covers. And Medicare covers what? Pardon? And Medicare covers what? Well, it don't cover all of it. My yeah, Blue I know. Cross just just almost all of it, ma'am. Thank you ever so much for your input. At once, I'm Don Richards. Well, it's a Wednesday afternoon, April the 26th, 1989. I'm sitting in Frank Marquez and he's living somewhere off of a lake, yeah, lake, lake Magdalene. And basically chatting with our friends and neighbors in the Tampa Bay area about what we owe people over the age of 60, what we owe people who would refer to themselves as senior citizens. Remarkable split so far. Those who are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s say nothing. Those who are over the age of 60 are talking about things which we are not talking about. We have no idea why they are taking part in the show because they either want to uh, complain about their local doctors charging too much or, you know, something that has nothing whatsoever to do with what you and I are talking about. <laughs> Uh, 990 in Hillsboro, 461 in Pinellas. Michael, what's the story on the tellies? Pretty good. All the Pinellas lines have fallen a couple of lines open in Hillsboro. So. Two lines open in Hillsboro, utterly unforgivable. So let me pound those numbers out again. 990-9352-990-WFLA. Let's go to Treasure Island. Treasure Island, T.I. Hi, you're on the air at 970. Good afternoon, Mr. Lester. Afternoon, T.I. A pleasure to speak to you, sir. The last time I talked, he was uh, in Cal's Cove. Uh, all right. Well, I hope you'll be there this coming Friday. Uh, definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, something you said earlier really rang a bell. Um, I deal a lot with uh, homeowners, and a lot of those are obviously uh, retired in this area. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like lifestyles of the old and cranky. Um, you do the best you can do to give them a service at a fair price, and they pull out a contract from somebody else, and they say, well, beat this contract. And you say, well, uh, let me look at it, and we punch our figures up again, and I, we cut it down to where we can just barely get by, and I say, okay, well, we'll do it. And then they say, well, now I want my 10% senior discount. <laughs> and, I, and I just, I go, oh, I can't deal with this. 
And, and I just, I really, I get to the point where I just say, look, I've gone as far as I can go. If you get somebody else to give you this price and then a 10% seniors discount, you better do it with them because I just cannot afford to do it for that kind of money. Well, it, it, it's something that a lot of these people seem to really, truly believe they are entitled to. When you said it earlier, I, my skin crawled because they do it, they do it to me every time. And I'm, I'm trying, really trying to give them a fair price for, for a, a fair job and... You do the best you can do, and then they call up and they say, I want my 10%. Well, I, I have to admit, I can't do it each and every time. Nobody can. But there have been lots of times when I have been on my way into a business establishment, and I see on the door, 10% in your citizen's discount, and I've done a 180 and walk right out again. It infuriates me that much. They kill me with, well, you've got an ad in the yellow pages, and there's a star. And I want to stick the star in their forehead. Well, I, and may I suggest perhaps uh, some other uh, portion of the uh, anatomy might be, be more appropriate. And, and you're right, you're you know, absolutely right. And if you're it gets right. around down at the uh, down at the bingo parlor, down at the shuffleboard court, at the uh, you know recreation centers, uh, maybe it won't take too long until they stop asking for these things. Well, I don't mind them asking for ten percent, but when they they haggle, number one, and you do the best you can do, and you're beaten uh, or trying to beat four other bids they've got for the same type of work and you're doing the very best you can possibly do, you're going right down to the line with them where you can keep your doors open and stay in business and still make a profit, and then they nail you with, I want my 10%. It's just, it's unbelievable. Well, I think we do a great disservice to our elderly in this country in, in many respects. I think that we don't show them enough respect. I think that we don't have enough concern for them. I think that many of us who are still in our younger or middle years uh, should be ashamed of the way we treat most of our elderly. And I, I mean that in all sincerity. But by the same token and at the same time, some of these people, and I appreciate it's only a handful, but yet some of these people are so damned obnoxious as to make it almost seem like it's okay to be rude and yeah. thoughtless about our elderly. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, uh, they tend to be very, very cranky. And what I, what I don't understand is how can you possibly have that kind of an attitude living in the part of the world that you live in? This is, this is absolutely beautiful. You have, for the most part, a, a good life. Uh, you're in, a, you're in a, a secure neighborhood. A lot of mobile home parks are, are secure and, and safe. And they have their income. And their check comes every month. They really don't have that much to worry about. And yet they are so obnoxious and so cranky and so nasty. Probably because they're lonely. Well, I guess they, they need don't to... realize what they've done in, in deserting Toledo and Newark and, and <laughs> Albany and all of those other towns. Uh, Maybe so they should sit down and write more time. letters to their kids or something. I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's, some of them are just unbearable. A lot of them, now don't get me wrong, a lot of them are really nice people. Oh, I think the vast majority of them are but, really nice people. But boy, you occasionally run into that one that is just a bear. An absolute bear. I, I, I wish that all of those ones who are so nice would come down a hell of a lot more often on the on the relative handful who are the greedy ones, who are the stingy ones, who are the short-sighted ones, and be a little bit more harsh on them, and also be a little bit more compassionate for their own generation. Absolutely right. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Nine nine zero nine three five two in Hillsboro. Nine nine zero WFLA. Let's go to Tampa. Tampa, it is. Hi, Tampa. You're on the air. Who's, am I on the air? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Oh, great. I've listened mm, maybe. to the conversation. I, I'm a merchant in Tampa, and I think older people are uh, wonderful people. I don't know where he comes up with their cranky. Some are, but you can overcome that. And as far as the senior citizen discount, I just tell them we don't discriminate against young people. That's all. And they generally accept that, and there's never a problem here. Well, so the fact of the matter is there are a fair number of people uh, who demand a discount, who think that just because they've reached a certain point in life, they're owed something. I don't agree with you. Well, I, I, I think it's a way that... I agree with you, sir, is irrelevant uh, because it happens to be a fact of life. I don't know. Where have you been? I've been in business here 20 years, and we did, 75% of our customers are over the age of 50. And uh, uh, we find it very seldom that, 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 they're, that they're that way. Uh, are we just discussing controversy? I think that they deserve... Sir, 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 sir whoa, 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 wait a second. What do you mean, uh, are we just discussing controversy? Okay, is that what you're doing? Just Get discussing a controversy? Get off my phone. No, sir, we're not just discussing controversy, which, first of all, is an asinine, asinine thing to say. And I'm very delighted, sir, that perhaps you're in a stable neighborhood in Tampa that does not have a large influx of 
cheap, cranky, mean old people. But there are areas that do. And I'm really glad, sir, that your area is not one of them. But uh, don't don't ever bother calling me again. Don't, don't we ever... go to Gary? Uh, yeah, as soon as I'll Oop. finish ripping this guy into you-know-what. Uh, don't ever suggest, sir, that uh, I just discuss controversy. No, sir, I discuss things in the real world, which is apparently a world that you don't live in. Now we can go to speaking of worlds that people don't live in. To Gary McHenry, high above the sky, who may or may not have any idea at all as to what part of the area he is over. We shall find out at the end of his report for a WFLA dangerous washboard report. Do you think he can make up for being four minutes late the first part of the afternoon by being two minutes early this time or something, or what? I don't understand what he's doing. Not two minutes early, McHenry. Hey, is it your birthday today, Mikey? Leave me alone. Is it your birthday? It was 20 seconds early. You're wasting time, Happy by the way. Happy birthday. You're wasting to time. You. Happy birthday. Can we get a muzzle for this guy? Hey, hey, look, he sings a hell of a lot better than he does other things, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Dale Maverick, northbound and Hudson Lane all opened up. Traffic trying to get back to normal. Back, we are in Frank's living room. Now, I walked in here, and the first thing that, that came to my mind is it's going to be really tough to sell Frank an Oric vacuum cleaner because half of the house is white tile, and the other half of the house is this beautiful, beautiful, high, highly polished hardwood. And then it suddenly dawned on me. You see, the Oric vacuum cleaner adjusts to virtually any surface, including surfaces like this. It's not just for uh, carpeting, Frank. So, you know, I'm sure that you, you guys, when and on top of that, by the way, Oric also makes the floor polishers and that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll tell you about that later on, several several weeks or months from now. But, uh, you know, even you, Frank, could, could benefit from an Oric vacuum cleaner. Now, I know that already you've jotted down the Grand Prix car wash for your cars, and that's good because your cars do really need some work. But uh, the floor isn't here. I'm sure that uh, you and, and your wife spend an incredible amount of time keeping them polished and keeping them clean. doesn't have to be that way, Frank. You could get yourself an Oric vacuum cleaner. It only weighs eight pounds. The thing will just glide around the floor. You and your wife will end up arguing over who gets a chance to use it. No, let me use it. No, let me use it. It's what happens at my house. It's what happens at a lot of houses that have Oric vacuum cleaners there. Now, the best place to get an Oric vacuum cleaner, Frank, of course, is the Oric Vacuum Care Center. And uh, there are two addresses. You, you can write these down right yeah, right underneath the Grand Prix Car Wash. 13230 North Dale Mabry, right here in Tampa. You can call them at 264-1937. Or if you want to go up to McMullen Booth Road, it's okay with me. That's 2454 McMullen Booth Road in Clearwater. Their telephone number is 726-0523. The Oric Vacuum Cleaner is incredible on carpets, deep pile, uh, sculptured pile, and it's also incredible on hardwood floors and tile floors. You can't go wrong with an Oric vacuum cleaner. Frank, you'll be so glad that I stopped by this afternoon. Your life is going to be in, you know, just, just immeasurably improved. Uh, Michael, what's the story on the phones? Uh, looking pretty grim in Hillsborough County, the 530 Blas. The 530 Blas in yeah. Hillsborough County. Well, let's, you know, again, we'll remind them about last Friday. And we'll give Rub them the, their nose in it. You That's better right. believe it, and we'll give them the telephone numbers again. Uh, 990-9352-990-WFLA. Very simple one. Easy one for you today. What do you owe the old folks? And, uh, basically the same question, of course, for Pinellas County, too. Actually, listen, someday we should have, you know, different shows for each county. What do you think? Ooh, I like that idea. You know, that, that's not would a bad this, idea. Would this be considered Pinellas County's show? Uh, yeah. You know, we would do stereotypical shows. Uh, uh -huh. for, for each of the counties, uh, you know, we might do something in Hillsborough, you know, for crime and something in uh, Pinellas County for, you know, I don't know, maybe a long wait to doctor's offices, that kind of thing. Now, see, uh, I have the stereotype of Hillsborough. A Hillsborough County show would be a show on illiteracy, maybe. Illiteracy. Ooh. Whoa. Uh, I better get out of this one. St. Petersburg's next. Hi, St. Petersburg. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi. Hello, Bob. Hello. I'm calling to tell you that I am in sympathy with what you said. I uh, I just turned 65, mm -hmm. but I feel that the young people do deserve a chance, and, and I understand their insurance premiums are high and so forth because my husband and I have just paid them up to $500 a month. Well, you see, that's another thing, too. I think our old people deserve a chance. I see utterly no reason why we should put somebody out to pasture at a, an arbitrary number of 65. That's insane. That's correct. I am still working out of necessity, really. Uh, I'm well, relating... make no difference if it's necessity or if you want to. If you want to work, you should be able to work. Well, I like to work. I, I like to work. But I'm um, going back to the 21-year-old that said that the people should have saved. Um, I can tell her I was a widow at 32 years old 
with three children. Mm -hmm. I naturally collected Social Security for my my children. Mm -hmm. I gave mine up. I went back out to work because I could make more money working than than I could in, in that time in 57. You I was know, only allowed to make 1200 a month. You have just mentioned something that drives me utterly insane. I've heard it more times than I care to. It's when someone who, first of all, has not taken the time or trouble to understand what the Social Security system is and how it works Right. calls up and complains bitterly about, well, you know, if we didn't give all that money to uh, those survivor's benefits, we'd have uh, plenty of money for the old retired folks. Uh -huh. I cannot believe that there are people in this country who would deny widows and orphans, and that's in essence exactly what it boils down that's to, right. the survivor's benefits. That when they hold you down, that you couldn't save a dime if you wanted to. Because at that time, as I said, I got $68 a month. Mm -hmm. And my children each got about $68 a month. Ain't nobody getting rich on it. That's right. So how could you save anything? You so can't. then I remarried a few years back. And about then, um, started our insurance premiums up till uh, 1st of April. I was paying $176. My husband's insurance was covered by his group insurance at work. But I had to pay my own. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I am still working out of necessity, but because I want to. And I work in the medical field. And now this is where I can understand some of these grouchy old people. I bill them for the 20% that, that Medicare does not cover. You would be amazed how many people will not pay it, do not want to pay it. And I've even had ones that lived in Bayfront Towers say they couldn't afford to pay it. Oh, it's just incredible that we pay, in essence, 80%. Uh, ask the elderly population to pay virtually nothing towards it. I mean, almost a token. That's right. And that some of them are still bitching and moaning about it. That's right. And it's usually the people who are able to pay all 100% themselves. That's right. That's absolutely right. And I have grandchildren that um, I know that uh, that have to, you know, I know what it is to raise children. I know that. And I, I just feel... Yes, these young people need a little break as far as national health care or something because well, the premiums know, are outlandish. You know, the fact of the matter is we all need a little break, young, middle-aged, and elderly. And unfortunately, we have uh, too many elderly people running around who feel as though that they are the only ones who are entitled to That's a break. Right. We all need a break. I thank you very much for the call. Thank you, and I'm going to try Cal Stove one of these days for that Caesar salad. May I recommend this coming Friday oh, night? I Make love reservations. Those. I haven't had a good one since I left Pennsylvania. Okay, well, make reservations for Friday night. Will do. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and make sure you say hello if you're out there. I will. Okay. Bye. Don Richard standing by at the WFLA News Desk. Donald? 970. Right on the nose. Uh, yeah, the, the weather guy's been complaining that, uh, you know, you, you have more reports than he does. And uh, <laughs> I was going to meet with Mistake a little bit later on today and see if, you know, we couldn't trade some of your trash reports for weather reports. Oh, yeah. Like you, you wouldn't mind that, would you, Gary? People need traffic information more. Bob, could I put in a, in a request for hockey scores? Hockey scores? I mean, that would be a hell of a lot. But, you know, McHenry, can you do hockey scores? <laughs> I'm, I'm not into hockey, Bob. I'm a traffic expert. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of things that you're not into. <laughs> traffic conditions right now are really... Well, but if we could just get one or two more, we'd, we'd have it made. One or two more, we'd yeah, have it made. So one or two more lines. Did, did you want to beg and plead with uh, them? No, it's not that critical no, yet. I mean, not you, that critical yet. 18 minutes, come on. Just just give the numbers, and if it happens, it 18 happens. 18 minutes, I could also do four or five Grand Prix commercials, and or, like, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah we'll Give the through. phone numbers, come on. 990-9352 in Hillsborough, 4619352 in Pinellas. Let's go to Dunedin. Hello. Hi, Dunedin. You're on the air at 970 Hello, WFLA. Yes, Bob, Bob Lasseter? Yep. First time caller. Great. I just wanted to tell you I'm a 67 year old widow and I've educated four children through university. I don't want anything from you people and I hope when you get to be my age you're on welfare. Uh -huh. Goodbye. So, in other words, you do want everything you can possibly get your hands on. I mean, you're lying through your nose, you miserable old bag. Would you call that a good call? Oh, come on, Michael. That's, you know, a four star, maybe a five. Oh. Well, I'm 67 years old, and I don't want nothing from you, and I hope you get to be my age on welfare. Lady, you're just that kind of miserable old bag I'm talking about, a mean-spirited old woman. Shame on you. Probably because those four kids you put through university don't call you anymore. 
probably what the problem is. What next, Michael? Tampa. You're on the air at 970 WSLA. Hi, Tampa. Tampa, what you ought to really do if, if, if older people have such a problem is do away with them. You know, when a guy gets to be 65, he goes down and says, give me my social security. Kill him. Feel sorry you know, do for away him. with them. What the hell? And that guy, 32 years old, he's so worried about the discount. I go into Wendy's and they say, here's a ticket. It's 10% off. I go into Steak and Shake, they give me a card. 10% off. I go to a theater to give me... The dummies want to give me a discount. I'll take it. What the hell do I care? Right. What the hell do you care about? Anyway, I don't mind the discount. No, I'll bet, you, I'll bet you accept all your... I'll bet you, I'll bet, 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 I'll bet you accept your cost of living allowance increase too, don't you? I love it. I'll bet you do. Want to because, you know why you love it, sir? Because you don't give a damn about anything. You don't give a damn about what this oh, country's no, going I mean, to be doing care. five years from now, ten years from now, twenty years from now. What do you care? You got yours. You couldn't care less about anybody else. Get him off my phone. He's making me sick to my stomach, Michael. Ooh, that was fun hanging up on that one. Ooh, I Give like him that. four and a half stars. <laughs> Let's go to Tampa. Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WSLA. Hi, Bob. Hi. Hey, uh, has, has them chocolate chip cookies been getting to you? Get him off my phone, Michael. Let's go to Bradenton. 990 in Hillsborough, 461 in Pinellas. Hi, Bradenton, you're Hi. on the air. <laughs> I am calling in spite of the fact that the last time we spoke, you called me a communist, which I probably have the distinction of being the I only person. I called you a communist? Yeah, I'm probably the only one. It was about Why? three years ago Good. when you had the astrologer on, and I called up and uh, ranked on her, and you asked me if I was a communist, but that's off the subject. <laughs> a lot of these people are talking about, especially the older people, about old people deserving respect, and I think that's avoiding the issue, is nobody deserves respect. People earn respect. Yeah, we sure seem to have had a spate of them in the last few minutes that didn't uh, earn or deserve. Any. Well, that's just it. And I don't think respect is very difficult to earn. I don't give people respect until they show me they're nice, but I don't treat people poorly until they do anyway. So I just, I think that... Thanks, Mike. Uh, uh -huh. Gee, um, uh, we, didn't, we didn't say anything. We should have said no, 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 I was okay. listening and I kept it off the air. Oh, uh, great. You're, you're a good sport. You really are... Um, where, where do you want me to go? Ebor City. Ebor City. Hi, Eb. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yes, it's the last of it. Yeah. Uh, I would just like your input on a couple uh, notations that I had down here. On, uh, you know, they were talking about the income. Uh, they were saying a lot of people get a high rate of income. Uh, Social Security is based on your income, right? In other words, what you make during your lifetime. Oh, that's right. Okay. Well, you know, how would these elderly people be making uh, all kinds of money, uh, you know, or somebody quoted them saying is they were making a lot of money? Uh, you know, I don't know. That was just one. If, oh, okay. Okay, another one. They say, well, I heard comments, people who want to work, uh, you know, people that don't want to, well, people that they don't want to go to work when they're retired, but people who do want to work, can earn, only earn a set amount of income before it affects the Social Security checks. In other words, they're cut off. That's right. From, uh, you know, there so that's, is... That's, that's not really what we were talking about. We oh, were okay. talking about companies that force people out, that make people retire. Well, if they make them retire and they're willing to work for, you know, uh, that, that kind of defeats the incentive if they are willing to go to work and then they're going to take out part of their money? Well, no, when, when, when you're forced out of work, when, when your company makes you retire, it's not a matter of incentive or, or not incentive. It's a matter of being forced to retire. That, and that's what we were talking about. All that, right. That very foolish practice uh, and notion yeah. that we have in this country that when you reach a certain age, just arbitrarily, you're not fit to work anymore. Right. Well, one other thing they were, you know, saying how, like, they go and say senior citizens discounts and stuff like that, you know, 10% off and stuff, and they say that irks some people. Yeah. Well, in a roundabout way, it, it's under different circumstances, but they do, like they say, children under 12 admitted free for special sporting events or, or things like that. There's there's another set of group getting, you know, a discount, mm -hmm. which, you know, might not directly be related. Well, but. the problem is that uh, rarely are there a bunch of militant children under the age of 12 walking around demanding, uh, you know, admittance to right. places. Uh, for free. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Glad Good. to help you out. Yeah, all righty. Okay, our pleasure here. Seven stars. <laughs>
Come on, it wasn't that good. Oh, come on. It was so damn convoluted. I was thinking about giving him nine. Yeah, but he was younger, do you know, so that do, takes away... Do you have away... any idea what, what his first premise was? I mean, do you know? No. Neither do I. No. No. Peter, do I? Good at St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg. Hi, St. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. It's been a long time since I've talked to you, Bob, and you'll probably give me a one star, but I'm going to tell you my way, my little one person in this world way of protesting the senior citizen discount. What's that? I do not shop or do business with any company or business that I know that gives a senior citizen discount. I try not to. It's not always easy. Uh, and sometimes I'm lazy and will d do it anyway. But where and when I can, I try very hard not to do business with them. I it, got in, it just angers me. Yesterday I got into a situation. I'm not going to name the name of the business. However, there is a place on 49th Street in St. Petersburg that is well known for its hamburgers and its 50s uh, deco, uh, art deco uh, position. Uh -huh. And um, because I am on a self-imposed diet, I wanted to go in and have some iced tea. I drive mm. all day, and I'm working outdoors. I pulled in, and there was a very, very long line, and I had a senior citizen in front of me. I waited 10 minutes to get to the, to the window to order my iced tea. But it was nice and cool, air conditioning. Man ordered his meal. The order came to $5.25. Mm. And he, in his pocket, he pulls out a card that entitled him to a 10% discount. I stepped out of line and walked out. Good for you. And I do not go to you. McDonald's for the same reason. I mean, to give an arbitrary discount on age is utterly absurd. If they gave a discount to people on low income, and I'd say, hey, that's really great. Now, I have, see their young world. I have a 63-year-old father that lives up in Massachusetts. And, of course, he's a member of AARP, and he get, and he's a, entitled to all of these discounts that disowning, they have. Disowning, disowning at once. My friend, I've got to run. I'm out of time for the day. We're, uh, we're just right here in Frank's living room. You never know. We might be here tomorrow, too. Uh, 